There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Another Trump supporter receives second class citizen treatment. Trump is a racial opportunist. He actually doesn't. Well, actually, no, I think. Oh, no, 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 You want it. You want it. this. You want it. Well, I think you're, I think you're a racial opportunist. Maybe so. You're a white male. You're a white man. Considered a minor issue. As if our president can grab a woman by the pussy, I can grab you by the ball. She just grabbed my dick. Is that sexual assault? Okay, so you're a Marxist. Yes. So you don't like capitalism? Yes. You don't like capitalism? That's correct. Okay, so even though the shirt you're wearing was produced by capitalism, the bike you're riding was produced by okay, capitalism, so the tattoos were produced by capitalism, your shoes produced by capitalism, everything that you have, all your freedoms, your ability to come up in my face and give me your opinion, all from capitalism, and you hate it. Donald Trump said on this video that he likes kissing pretty women and that you don't sir let me can I finish you like kissing ugly women excuse me Owen Troyer is a reporter and broadcaster with Infowars.com and Band.video you can also follow him on Gab at all I do is a win of course Owen is famously banned from all of mainstream media uh, social media, mentioning him in a positive light on those platforms, or even getting a photo with him, of course, will result in a ban on most of those Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for joining me, Owen. Hopefully, we don't get banned for this. Yes, just say something negative about me, and then you should be in the clear for at least <laughs> half an hour. How does it feel, by the way, to, to, to basically be depersoned like that? I mean, I know you guys predicted a lot of that was going to happen, but can you really prepare for something like that? Well, it's until you've actually experienced it, it's hard to really portray what it's like. I mean, one of the one of the common things that that happened, that it's kind of laughable at this point, but people always send me their stuff. Hey, share this on Facebook, share this on Twitter, please share this. It's like I have nothing like and they keep sending it no matter what. They're always saying I need this Facebook post. And it's like I can't I can't even get on there. Uh, but that's just kind of the little things. Uh, the, the bigger thing is like not having that platform, especially once you have used to having that platform, used to having that reach, whatever it was for some people, it's really large accounts for others. Even if it's small, it's still there. Uh, that's kind of like the, the more strange thing to it is having that voice just cut off and then you're not even allowed to be there. It's like watching all your friends at a party that you're not allowed to be at. Uh, but quite frankly, it's almost in a way, uh, been a blessing I think it's probably more healthy uh, for for my mental health not to be on there and, and tweeting and posting and worrying about all the stuff that goes on there. And also because we were kind of on the first wave of the ban that that kind of prepared us, I think, for the new this new era of censorship so that we built our own platforms like band video and we weren't reliant on the big tech mm -hmm. platforms like so many people are. And then by the time they they have their they get their deplatforming, they don't know what to do. Yeah, and uh, on on the topic of the partisanship that has been shown by most of these social, uh, all, all of them, I guess you could say, all of these social media companies, I want to dial back to some of your videos and, you know, get your thoughts on how they stand with you now. So one of them I want to throw back to first is when you were arrested at the Capitol. I think that was is just over a year, year ago now. And get your thoughts on how this reflects on politics in 2021. So let's get to that clip. Well, there you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Another Trump supporter receives second-class citizen treatment. Another conservative receives second-class citizen treatment. Is that because you don't know the reason? Leslie. You don't know the reason, do you? He's impeached already. So, so, so I'm going to dominate them. Let's dominate them. So here's the truth about Trump's impeachment. They're claiming that Trump's impeachment is for Ukrainian quid pro quo. The only problem is Nancy Pelosi, who advanced the articles of impeachment to the Senate, admitted that they started this inquiry before Trump was even president. So how can they impeach Trump for something he did as president? You're in the way. So how can you not touch my cameraman, please? Stop lying. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, let's get him going. So here's the five minutes of hate. They'll deny the reality that Nancy Pelosi admitted that they started the impeachment process before Trump became president. So how? It's bullshit. No, that's, a, that's sir, a let me talk. Bullshit. Would you like to talk? Uh, what is Trump being impeached for? 
Sir, I will talk to you. I'll explain the truth. Trump is being impeached for what? Uh, any article of impeachment. No, 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 what? What are they bringing forward? Why? Was he impeached? No, no, why? 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 What was it? Can anybody tell me why Trump was impeached? Can anybody tell me why Trump was impeached? So you got arrested for basically a silent protest just a day after a whole demonstration. Can you explain what happened there? Well, we were there, as you said, the day before. This is at the U.S. Capitol building in January of 2020. Mm -hmm. And this was actually a month after I was uh, arrested for being in the impeachment hearings and standing up and saying Trump was innocent. So they already had a target on my back. That is the D.C. Capitol Police. I was I was even told that. In fact, I mean, I was warned that I would be arrested that day. And they did, of course, come after me and arrest me. But because the day before, as you said, there was a large impeachment uh, display or, or we'll say protest, however you want to say it. I guess they weren't classifying it as a protest, but it was about 30, 40 people. They all had messages on their shirt. They were standing in a line so that you could read the message. They had a larger message. And I came up that day and, and I simply said, oh, well, I'll go interview these people. Hey, what is your demonstration? Why should Trump be impeached? And of course, none of them could answer the question, typical uh, liberal Democrat protest fashion. They're out there protesting, but can't answer a single question as to why. And so then they dispersed and they all kind of went in their direction. And then they got a private tour of the Capitol. They just it's immediately, oh, Schroyer shows up, they disperse, they get a private tour of the Capitol after their impeachment display that they had going on for hours. They do it on the regular, actually. At the time, they were regularly there. So I showed up the next day and I said, well, I'll do my own demonstration, a one-man silent demonstration. I even had tape over my mouth that mm -hmm. said censored on it. And the Capitol Police came down and arrested me and say that it was an illegal demonstration. And after that all happened, I mean, how did, did, did you reflect on any of the media coverage? I remember watching at that time, it's just, a uh, protester arrested at the Capitol. They know who you are, but they don't want to say it. Do, is there anything to be said about how the media covered, covers something like that in a completely partisan manner? You know, honestly, other than Infowars, I'm not even sure who did cover it because I was in jail yeah. for, I think, 29 hours, and then I immediately had to get out of jail and be to an airport within an hour and a half, and then it was like a three-hour flight, and then by the time I got home, so I, don't, I didn't even see any media of, coverage of it. I'm actually surprised any media did cover it. Uh, nobody ever reached out for comment or anything mm -hmm. like that. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it was such a long process for me just to get my feet back on the ground after that that uh, I didn't even notice any media coverage, and nobody ever reached out for comment, really, that I can recall. So after the whole, we're in 2021 now, after the whole Russia investigation, uh, the way the media treated people like you and the politicians and of certain cities allowing Black Lives Matter and Antifa and so forth to ravage the cities, do you think Republicans should sort of counter that, go do the same thing? Can they even do that without the power? Do you think that they should respond in kind like that? I think that, you know, on one level, the, the average Republican doesn't like to run dirty tricks and deceptive techniques like the Democrats do. I mean, let's just be honest. That's, that's a Democrat Party technique, whether it's faking hate crimes like Jesse Smollett or, uh, you know, faking Russian collusion like the entire media and Democrat Party did. So for, for Republicans who I think get on that level that you're, you're talking about, they, they, they look at themselves and they'd say, well, we'd have to start playing these dirty games. We'd have to be lying scoundrels. Uh, you know, deceivers like the Democrats are. And, and the average Republican just do, doesn't want to do that. And I would say the average corrupt Republican just lets the Democrats get away with it uh, or, or like a Mitch McConnell or something like he's never going to fight these people. So I, I don't think that going to the lengths of the Democrats is the answer. But I think being honest about what it is that they're doing and being more uh, fierce in the in the pushback against it, saying, hey, look, you're you're out here faking hate crimes and then introducing critical race theory into our schools, like who, who's really causing racism in this in this country right now? Who, who's really adding racism to the equation here? And and that's just one small example. So I think it's more of a it's it's a pushback against the deceptions. It's an, an acceptance of the reality that if if Nancy Pelosi's up there talking or Chuck Schumer's up there talking, they're probably lying to you and just calling it out. I think that they're afraid of saying the wrong thing. And, and having some negative story printed, that's, that's, what they, that's the obstacle they need to leap. Not playing the dirty tricks of the Democrats, but leaping the hurdle of saying, hey, I'm not gonna be ashamed 
of whatever I call this person or how, however I address this person because they're the liars, they're the crooks, they're the deceivers, not me. I definitely agree on those points. And right now, it seems to me that Biden and a lot of the Democrats are basically pretending states like Texas, Florida, Dakotas, they don't really exist. How do you feel about the state of politics in the country? And why do you think these lockdowns are being perpetuated as if, like I said, these other states aren't open and don't exist? Well, the lockdown theme uh, is a worldwide theme. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that, that that is dealing with something that goes beyond even um, you know, the local government, the state government, or even the federal government. I mean, it's the CDC, I think, for the most part, influencing that policy, maybe uh, Fauci at the NI, uh, NHIH or whatever it is. Uh, but I think that for states, when you look at Florida or you look at Texas or some of the other ones that have stayed open, like a South Dakota, uh, you know, that that is something that should be looked at. You should be saying, hey, here are the states that have opened, here are the states that haven't, and then you can do a compare and contrast Notice that the Democrat states like New York and Illinois and California had to have hundreds of billions of dollars of bailout money in the stimulus bill because their states were collapsing. But the lockdown thing, I mean, that's really a worldwide theme uh, that, that is just, I believe, a, a drill being run worldwide right now, just worldwide government, global government. We're all experiencing that right now. So I think that that's more th uh, of the issue that we're dealing with here. Uh, but as far as most other issues, I think that the state is probably the the answer when trying to get the federal government off your back. And what you see in Florida and South Dakota and Texas kind of rejecting the masks, rejecting the lockdowns, I think that that's kind of been a key factor. Oh, and you're, you're getting dangerous here. You're making too much sense. We're going to have to pull the plug on this interview. Um, I, I think the media has a big role to play in this, and I often ask people if they think um, a lot of the media members, and I'm talking the CNNs, the MSNBCs, are they bad at their job or are they just lying? So I often ask that question. I want to ask that to you, but let me play an interaction you had once with somebody from CNN, Van Jones. And I want to juxtapose that with him crying on election night. So let's see if we can play that one. Here's what I believe about Donald Trump. I believe that Donald Trump is not a racist. I believe that Donald Trump is worse than a racist. Now, let me tell you why I think he's worse than a racist. Okay. A racist is someone who believes that his group is superior to another group. That's a racist. Now, that's man. pretty bad. Hey, how you doing, brother? Good, Good to see, see you. you. Yeah, man. That's pretty bad to think that your group is good another group is bad that's that's horrible who's donald trump's group but trump is worse than that trump is a racial opportunist he actually doesn't well, actually no i think oh no 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 you want it you want it this you want it this i think you're i think you're a racial opportunist maybe so but oh let's see now here's the deal here's the deal this is why i want to walk away because i didn't know if you were the man who had enough character to listen to my answer so okay. it's a character test for you. I'm sorry, uh, man. Go ahead. Okay, oh, very you're good. bad. You're okay. bad. No, no. I'm, I'm saying it's a test. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. All right. So ahead, now, you ask the question: Is Donald Trump a racist? I say Donald Trump is not a racist. I say he is worse than a racist. He's a racial opportunist. In other words, he uses other people's racial anxieties, other people's possible uh, racial antipathies, or just un uh, discomfort, and he plays with it for his own purposes, which means he doesn't think that his group is better than anybody else. He thinks everybody's stupid. He's playing all of us. That's what I think about Donald Trump. It's, um... Well, it's easier to be a parent this morning. It's easier to be a dad. It's easier to, it's easier to tell your kids character matters. It matters. Telling the truth matters. Being a good person matters. And it's easier for a whole lot of people. If you're Muslim in this country, you, you, you don't have to worry if the president doesn't want you here. So, Owen, try to hold back your tears on this one. On one hand, he's joking around with you. He's, you know, Trump is just a racial grifter. He'll give credit to Kushner and Trump other times. But other times... You know, everything's a white lash, and he, he's crying about how tough it is to be a parent in America. Is there any way to determine whether or not these people are just bad or at their jobs or just lying? I think that it's, it's a case-by-case case thing, honestly. I think that you have to go case-by-case case when dealing with these media people. Like, for example, Anderson Cooper, 
I think is just a known liar. That that one I think <laughs> many people would have to uh, have accepted by now. But you know, when you talk about Van Jones, it's rare. Now here here's the credit that I will give to Van Jones because I've had the opportunity to uh, meet face to face almost every CNN host. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, Tapper, Lemon, Blitzer, Cooper, and and Jones. I guess he's not a host, but Van was the only one that actually talked to me. Every mm -hmm. other one refuses to talk to me. They all had security come brush me away. Uh, Tapper was probably the meanest of all of them. Uh, but there was an energy to Anderson Cooper. Let me just tell you, like, our cell phone equipment stopped working. But anyway, I'll stop right there. <laughs> I'll stop right there. So here's the thing. With Van Jones, you can tell that there's a realness to the guy. There's a, there's a you know, he, he, can, he can be real with you. You could probably sit down at a bar and enjoy a cold beverage with him, and it wouldn't be such a bad experience. But... He's obviously ex he's obviously exaggerating his emotions on TV. He's obviously selling to the audience. He's been caught on Project Veritas tape admitting mm -hmm. that he knew Russian collusion was a fake story, but yet they ran with that for three years. So so he, he, he doesn't have the most integrity, I would say, when it comes to being a reporter or a newsman. But he's smart enough to get by. He's smart enough to do what he needs to do to be successful on TV. He came out of the Obama administration. He's obviously a smart guy. But the funniest thing about that clip has to be the blatant hypocrisy of Van Jones saying uh, saying Trump is a racial opportunist when that's everything CNN is. I mean, everything he just said is exactly what the liberal media does, whether it's George Floyd or Jacob Blake or Michael Brown and all the big lies that they tell. So, I mean, that's just incredible hypocrisy there from Van Jones. But uh, I think I think Van Jones is probably the best, better way to, ex to describe his situation would be he's just he's kind of an actor. He's, he's more of an actor on TV. He's smart enough that he knows what to say, what not to say. And so he's been successful on CNN coming out of the Obama administration. And he knew Russian collusion was fake news, but he still talked about it. So that's kind of one example of just Van Jones. Now, can we take any merit in watching the CNNs or the MSNBCs? Or maybe your favorite, the Young Turks, I'd imagine, is probably your favorite. <laughs> um, or should we just watch them to see what the other side is saying? I don't watch a single second of the Young Turks. <laughs> I, I do, I do. I don't think I don't see any. I don't see any perceived value coming out of anything <laughs> they do. Uh, I, I mean, there is an. I think there's maybe some inherent value in, in watching CNN or MSNBC or some of the mainstream news that that I just I, I monitor just to monitor what their narratives are and to kind of see where they're trying to go, where they're going to go next, what they're saying, because you have to counter their lies. That's part of the. That's part of the the job now of being a reporter and telling the truth is just countering the mainstream lies, countering the mainstream narrative. And so when you can kind of put your finger on the pulse of what they're going to do, you can kind of see what they're going to do next and, and see what the deception is. So I think there's some value in monitoring that, at least from uh, where I sit at a news desk. But yeah, the Young Turks will never get a second of my time. Uh, I, I wish they would actually like debate us. I mean, that would be fun. That would actually be something that would probably get millions of views. But for some reason, they never have any interest in that. I think the uh, Alex and Chank interaction is one of my favorite videos of all time. Uh, who is that that spits on him? Is that G was that Jimmy Dore who spit on Alex Jones? I think it was, yeah. And, now and the funny thing is that video and the Van Jones video, they were both from the Republican National Convention in 2016. All those videos, they had millions of views banned from YouTube. Can't even, so I don't know how you guys found him. Good job. <laughs> Now, free speech, I want to transition to something I believe in wholeheartedly. And if you want, if people want to lie on air, Van Jones wants to lie on air, I'm okay with that. But I want to move on to specifying on like weaponizing political experts or former office holders uh, for what, for lack of a better term, you could call propaganda. Now, I want to show an interaction you had with uh, former Congressman Al Green. Uh, where he repeats the Charlottesville lies. And I want to talk about, like I said, weaponizing these former politicians to get your point across. Will you please quit lying about the president? No, I'm going to say the truth. He's not a racist. He is a bigot and a racist. He's, he's won awards he's for his and contributions to he inner cities. A bigot and a racist. What has he done that's bigoted, he is sir? A bigot and a racist. What has he done? There were no fine people in Charlottesville. What does that have to do with anything? What about the veterans that were there? Well, the veterans who were there are fine people. That's but who he was talking people, about, the veterans. People who involved, were involved in killing that lady were not fine people. Okay, well, that was a very tragic okay. situation. Well, look, now I've talked but, to you. But Trump is not a racist. Is, look, you have and you should opinion. stop saying that. You no, have that's, your opinion. that's ridiculous. Well, look, it, at all the, look, look at all the black people he works with. Great look at all the Hispanic but, people he works with. But racists work with black people. Your sometimes. rhetoric is causing political violence. Well, your you rhetoric is your dividing opinion. the nation. You're entitled to your no, opinion. No, sir. I
There's no five people there. Oh wait, yes, the veterans are five people. He kind of answered his own question. So Owen, when people are the status of former congressmen, or they're the John Brennans and James Clappers, they're lying nightly on TV, how should the public deal with that? Well, when you're dealing with a James Clapper or some of these other CIA guys that go on MSNBC and CNN, I think that that's a little uh, more extreme than a uh, than an Al Green, mm -hmm. who's, who's just, quite frankly, a fumbling, bumbling moron. <laughs> uh, just from my few exchanges with him, uh, that's the sad truth of the situation there. But, you know, I, I think it's tough when they're in office or when they're when they actually have a government job. I think that they should be they should have some sort of. I mean, I would treat it almost like uh, perjuring yourself under oath. I mean, if you're if you're if you're working for the American people, I mean, I guess we have treason laws, you know, sedition laws and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, lying about weapons of mass destruction and then how many troops go into uh, Iraq or Afghanistan and die because of those wars. I mean, we could go on and on. The Gulf of Tonkin. This goes. This has been going on for decades. But in the modern day, it's Brennan going on CNN saying, "Yeah, Trump. Trump is a Russian agent." Uh, you know, we have Trump doing this and Trump doing that, all lies, uh, but he's not with the CIA anymore. Uh, so how do you how do you deal with that? I don't know. It's 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 a kind of a tough situation. But for Al Green, again, like you said, we don't we don't call for anybody to be censored. We're, we're free speech purists. So Al Green has every right to go out there and call Trump a racist as much as he wants. Uh, but so I don't know. I don't know what you really do to punish that. The problem is we 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 are supposed to be living in a free republic. So that means free market, free market of information, elections, everything. But that's kind of eroding away. So normally somebody like Al Green would not have a chance at office. He, he's an idiot. He's a fumbling, bumbling moron. He lies to the American people every day. He divides the nation every day. This guy should have no chance in a free and open market with free and fair elections. But we don't have a free market of information. It's not even close. And I, I don't think there's many people that even trust we have free or fair elections these days either. And that's how you end up with the Al Greens and the Nancy Pelosi's uh, and the Maxine Waters in there for decades. Somehow, nobody seems to vote for these people. Nobody seems to like them, but they're there. They never lose an election. And so uh, I think the problem here is we don't have a free flow of information. And I, I don't think we have actual fair elections or even real elections, quite frankly. Do you think there should be term limits? I mean, I, I, that's not really a big issue I take up. Uh, I, I think that uh, if we had great politicians in there that were, you know, in there for 50 years doing great things, standing up for America, we maybe wouldn't talk about term limits much. Uh, but because it seems to be the criminals and the crooks that take advantage of no term limits, um, you know, then maybe that's something to be considered. Uh, but I think there's other ways to, to solve these problems without, you know, imposing more law. Can you recall when do you think it was in your life when you started, you know, watching the, the television and being like, I don't necessarily trust this person because the TV tells me they're an expert. Was there any moment like that or was it just a gradual? I mean, I remember pretty vividly you sharing the list of people from the WikiLeaks that CNN um, was sharing their information. Like the, the media, you remember what I'm talking about? The media list of people that were basically colluding with the, the Clinton campaign. Um, when was it that you sort of as a person realized that maybe I shouldn't just be taking everything that these people say to heart? Yeah, there was a, a very specific date. I, I believe it was it was the day of the Boston Marathon bombing. I think it was April 12th or 13th, 2013. I'm trying to remember the exact date, but anyway. And the only reason it wasn't necessarily anything too crazy about that day, other than the fact that I was in sports media and that was all my, that was my whole career. I was in sports media. I never watched a lick of political news. I mean, literally zero, zero minutes, zero seconds of politics, current events, didn't care. I was in the sports matrix. And so <laughs> that was the first time really when, since I had been in professional broadcasting that sports and, and you know, current events and news kind of merged. And so for the first time ever, I tuned into cable news. Now, I mean, literally first time ever. I think I'm like 22 or 23 uh, hosting sports radio. And so just watching the news to figure out what's going on with this Boston bombing situation. And it was just like, it was just like instinctual. Like no matter what channel, like I just knew I was like this. this I don't trust any of these people. This whole all this seems fake. And then just through a little research of my own with alternative news outlets, uh, just to do a little bit of research on what was actually happening at the scene, 
uh, I found out that there were a bunch of anomalies and there was a bunch of information they weren't reporting. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, if I can get this information and if I can know this is going on, then certainly these people on cable television news know this is going on. And yet they're not reporting it. Hmm, something seems up here. And then it went on. I still remember the people's names. Ed Davis, Rich DeLaurier, uh, Carmen Ortiz, I think was the judge's name. I mean, it was that was my red pill moment was just watching how the whole thing works, watching how they rig news, watching how they cover up uh, current events. And it was just like, boom, that was my red pill. Like, OK, TV news has been lying my whole life. Hmm, history is being written by the people that rig it my whole life. Huh, this is kind of a weird thing. And then I started transferring from uh, sports to politics. And it was really after the RNC of 2016, I think, that that was like my final time being in sports. And then I moved on to politics. Yeah, and I think that was a time where yourself and Alex Jones and Infowars really started opening up. I mean, you guys became... Uh, like you were big before, obviously, but in the mainstream news, you started to become a juggernaut with the the Hillary uh, fainting ordeal, the wobbly. This <laughs> is a, and you guys were the first ones to report it. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson was right in there too, as well. I should mention his name. So I think that helps with a lot of people realizing that they're not the only ones who are, you know, the coming to a realization that everything that they see on there, this person that CNN puts up, who's an expert, uh, John Oliver's opinion, isn't exactly the end all be all. It's sort Sort of like a, a fantasy land where only one point of view exists and and everybody else who thinks otherwise well those are the crazy people and i think you would get a lot of that if you watched a lot of uh, late night talk shows i don't know do you ever ever turn any of those on i guess i i would have to assume that you don't no i, I i'm i'm missing out on that <laughs> you don't want to see jimmy kimmel cry is that what you're telling me no i'm uh, i'm i'm missing the kimmels of the world or whoever else is hosting late night talk these days yeah, I haven't been able to watch it myself since I think Trump became president because it all just it all just took such a sharp turn and, and there's so many publications like that. So bad segue I want to make to is once when you were sexually assaulted on video. <laughs> um, for those of you watching who don't know about this, please take a look. Um, it's not as serious as it may sound. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm downplaying it, but let's take a look at that. I think the instance in itself could be considered a minor issue. So as if our president can grab a woman by the pussy, I can grab you by the ball. She just grabbed my dick. Is that sexual assault? No, bye. Is that sexual assault? Yes. So you just sexually assaulted me? I did assault so you. So did you be arrested? Arrest me. Well, I'm not going to arrest you. There are police officers right here. But So hey. look at this. Women have so much privilege, she can sexually assault me and get away with it. If I did that to her, I'd get arrested. I just told you. If you want to go ahead, there are police right here. I don't, I don't, I'm not complaining. You're the oh, one that walked up and grabbed my crotch. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm fighting for equality here. How so? Women get grabbed by the fucking pussy, then I'm going to grab you by the balls. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, Owen. I don't know if you're still mentally recovering from that, but a lot of people like me uh, want to know what ended up happening with that afterwards. She she did get charged with uh, I forget the ex exact charges, but I pressed charges for sexual assault and she did get sexual assault charges. Uh, it, it happened. Uh, all, all the court case and everything concluded, I believe, over a year ago now, maybe even two. So it's a little hazy, the final conclusion that was reached. But she did receive charges. And, um, you know, looking back on it, basically what we decided, the, the lawyers were like, well, you know, technically, I think that she, she should be charged with this, but their lawyers didn't want it because that would put her on like a lifetime list, you know, of uh, sexual assaulters. And they thought maybe the judge wouldn't be so willing to go along with that. So they said, let's let's put the charges to a lesser sexual assault charge because we think that'll be a higher percentage. And that's what she ended up getting. That was maybe the only regret because I think that, you know, maybe she should have had a little more punishment there. But I think she probably learned her lesson. And the ultimate lesson, of course, is that once again, you, you just look at the way the, the left behaves. You look at the way Democrat voters behave in public. They're just total hypocrites. They don't believe in their message. 
They don't even know their message. Uh, they're out there fighting sexual assault and sexually assaulting people in the streets. So, I mean, I don't know how much more hypocritical it gets than that. But, you know, what's sad, though, is how many times I've been assaulted in the streets, how many times I've been death threatened in the streets. I mean, dozens of times. And I believe to this day that is the only arrest. That is the only arrest I mean, I've had men spit on me, the cops witness it. I've had men throw punches at me, the cops witness it. I've had men grab my genitals, uh, drag queen story time deals, and the cops are right there and they get away with it. So, I mean, that's been the only time of all the death threats and assaults, that's been the only one that's resulted in arrest, which is pretty sad. This is going to sound like a rhetorical question, but right now there's no BLM mass marches or riots. There's no Antifa really in the streets except for, of course, in their stronghold city of Portland, which they now rule, I guess. No women's march this year. Have these problems just gone away under Biden, Owen? Or do we no longer have somebody to blame for it? Well, I think that the the agenda here has, has run its course, right? Get Trump out, you know, get Trump. So I think now that Trump's out of the White House, I think the, you know, these, these movements have really run their course. They've, they've fulfilled their duty. Uh, yeah, why wouldn't you have Me Too for Biden? I mean, you know, I guarantee you most of these people that claim Trump sexually assaulted someone probably couldn't even name the name, name a single name of a woman that's accused him. Uh, but everybody knows Tara Reid, right? Uh, so it's funny how Tara Reid doesn't get any uh, Me Too marches or anything like that for Biden. But, you know, we don't even need Tara Reid. I mean, we have the videos of Biden when women come into the White House and children come into the White House, the sniffing, the groping. So, I mean, now that you have Cuomo, too, mm -hmm. they ignored Fairfax. I mean, they, they laughed at Franken. So it just it just showed you the Me Too was nothing more than get Trump. That's all it ever was. And now that Trump's out, it's it's run its course. So, oh, magically, the Me Too marches are done. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that's just coincidence. <laughs> those are some of your best videos, though. So we need those marches back. We need <laughs> more content that way. And I'm really surprised that the Biden uh, smelling hair of teenagers and saying, oh, aren't, aren't you 17? And they're like, no, I'm 12. I'm surprised those don't get circulated a lot. Maybe they are just suppressed is a more likely outcome. So we want to say goodbye to the YouTube audience now, Owen. We're going to move behind the paywall. So you guys can go to rebelnewsplus.com to see the rest of this interview for just $8 a month. And what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about some of you, another one of your most, possibly your most viral video. We're going to get your opinion on vaccines and young Republican groups. So go to rebelnewsplus.com to see the rest, you guys. Thank you for watching, Andrew Says. If you want to see the full uncut version, go to rebelnewsplus.com and sign up today so you can see the entire episode where we talk about topics we can't show you on YouTube. They'll ban us.